Kevin Gibbons. Kevin Gibbons is uh, from the California Highway Patrol. He's the outreach coordinator for the commercial division and located in Woodland. He's going to talk to us today about uh, the laws and regulations regarding transportation of ag equipment and livestock, and I'm just going to go ahead and turn it over to you. And I think you have some things you want me to hand out here, too. Yeah, right? we have some out, out on the table. Some, okay, well, just, okay, there's going to be a number of brochures that are out there that you want to pick up that will describe some of the things that he's talking about. So welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, is it okay? Can you guys hear me if I don't use this thing? Can everybody hear me okay? Oh, you need me for that. Okay. All right. Okay. I probably have a pocket someplace in here for this thing. As long as no bullets are falling out anywhere and everything. Um, well, anyways, uh, good morning, and let me know if I'm talking too loud there. Just, uh, my name is Kevin Gibbons, and I coordinate our commercial industry education program for our Valley Division. And uh, I don't know if any of you have had highway patrolmen come out and talk to you about uh, commercial rules and regulations. And I think most of the, the information that you guys are looking for are licensing, am I right? What type of license do I need? Um, and this is going to be a very interesting presentation. We could put stuff up there, but it, you know, it kind of goes in a whole bunch of different directions. And a lot of times you'll ask us questions and somebody will give you the answer, but you won't ask us where is that written down. And a lot of times it's the bad answer. And so as we're talking today, you know, at lunch, I'm going to hang around for a little while. So if you have a specific situation that you would like some information on, you know, we can get into the vehicle code here. And, and we can piece it out, okay? We're not going to memorize the whole thing. Because there, there, there's no highway patrolman out there, by the way, no matter what they tell you, that has this book memorized. And when we're getting into stuff that, 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 uh, that deals with... Um, does somebody know somebody that has it memorized back there? Huh? Um, uh, I'd like to meet that guy. But uh, you hear a lot of stuff going around with what I do is I deal mainly with trucking companies. And part of my position, I'm supposed to get our subject matter expert out to you folks or whoever it is um, to talk about things. The problem is I'm not the subject matter expert on livestock stuff. But I know enough to be dangerous so I can help you out with that. Um, uh, size and weight stuff is an expertise area of mine. Are, uh, do any of you know Muriel McKenzie? One of our officers, she's probably come out, she talked with you folks before. That's who I would have liked to have got to come out and talk to you today. But I think I'll be able to give you enough information, enough contact information that you'll be able to follow up with us. And what I want to do is start just with the basics on driver's license stuff. Is driver's license an issue that you guys have? What type of license do I need to draw this type of equipment? I went to a... Um, RV dealership not that long ago, a partner of mine, and, and we were just in our regular civilian clothes, and we were looking at a toy hauler. You guys toy haulers? Um, uh, and so we're taking a look at this toy hauler, and it has a gross vehicle weight rating of 17,500 pounds. So the salesman asked my partner, hey, what type of truck do you have? And he said, I have an uh, F-250 uh, diesel. And he said, oh, yeah, your truck will pull this. And I told him, I said, well, his driver's license won't. And the guy told me, he goes, oh, yeah, you can pull this on a Class C, what it, you know, it's no problem at all, passenger car license. So is there exceptions for certain things in driver's license? So the real, the, the, a single vehicle in the vehicle code, and we can talk about this, and there's going to be these recreational trailer handbooks that are going to be on the table out there, and it breaks down by picture what you can tow with different types of driver's license, okay? And then we can go over some stuff. You've probably heard of uh, restricted Class A uh, for a livestock uh, trailer, that kind of stuff. Have you all heard those things? Um, and, and as we're going through this, I want to also say if a question pops up right in the middle of this that goes into your head, just raise your hand and we'll hit that right then and there. So we're just going to go basic and we'll start with a Class A license. A Class A license is only needed if you're towing a vehicle that has a gross vehicle weight rating over 10,000 pounds. So if the manufacturer puts a gross vehicle weight rating on that trailer or vehicle, so if my truck breaks down and, uh, what's your name, sir? Jared. Jared? Jared? Jared calls me up, and, or I call Jared up, and I tell him, hey, I need you to come pick me up. 
My truck has a gross vehicle weight rating of 11,000 pounds. We hook it up to, to his F-150. Let's say he's got an F-150. He hooks that up to my truck and tows me down the road. The vehicle code says because he's towing a vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating over 10,000 pounds, he needs a full-blown Class A license to tow that vehicle. Okay? Everybody good with that? No. We're not good with But... And, and, and here's another thing that's important during this presentation today, okay? If you don't tell me, give, give me all the information, if you just give me enough information to get the answer that you want, then that's not going to help either one of us, right? Um, uh, and, and I can tell you right now, I don't agree with a lot of this licensing stuff because you can go, and I probably shouldn't say that if I'm on tape, right? But, uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> So, so Kevin, uh, you'll be working back in South Sac again after that. Uh, friend, a lot of enforcement done on you by the Highway Patrol. Really? It, well, it's probably in your passenger car speeding or something, right? No? Zero tickets. But, but you've okay. So you're commercial operation. So you run into us. Uh, are you do you operate up? Butte County. So now. But I'm talking about with your horse trailers, things like that. Is that where you're running into the issue? So do you... Uh-huh. Okay. So... <laughs> See, that's, that's the deal. So now we're running... And this is where we start running into issues because is it a pickup? Is it not a pickup? Right? So there's all these things going. So we'll hit licensing. CA numbers. Yep. So you can see... <laughs> well, that's right. And, 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 and we call that, like, I'll, we'll be in an office working, and people will call us on the phone, and I'll talk to them, give them an answer, and then I'll hear the guy in the cubicle next to me. sounds like he's talking to the exact same person a few minutes later. So I didn't give him the answer he wanted, so he saw if he could get this answer from this guy. And that happens all the time. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you is what the book says, and exactly what it's written down today, the things that I tell you. If I can't tell you that, then we'll get a number and we'll exchange information and I'll get you that right answer because that's what you need. And 90% of my job when I'm going to these commercial places and talking to folks is uh, clarifying rumors. Like, I heard this, this officer told me this, you know, I'm at the coffee shop eating my donut and having some coffee, right? And you walk up to me and you have a question. Hey, how long can a combination of vehicles be, officer? And I go, uh, 70 feet. And then you walk away and I go, is that right? But you go tell 100 people that this officer told me that I could be 70 feet long. But so, so we're just going to hit the basics first. So 12804.9 in the vehicle code, and this is all available to you free online, okay? And I'm sure you're going to remember all those sections that I give you today, right? So 12804.9 of the vehicle code. Are triple trailers legal in California? And there's nothing that says that, by the way. You can pull triple trailers in California as long as you have the doubles slash triples endorsement and you don't exceed the basic combination length law of 65 feet. But you get an exception for, some, for, for doubles as long as neither trailer is over 28 and a half feet to get 75 feet, so why would you go triples? Um, illegal to drive barefoot? Have you ever heard that? Yeah. That's a big one I get. And then there's nothing that says that. Can you change lanes in an intersection? <laughs> What's that? What's not a commercial vehicle? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, if you can show me where it says that, then you know I'll change what I. Yeah, and 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 uh, what's that? That it's illegal to drive barefoot? No, no, I'm changing lanes. Oh, but, but there's nothing in the vehicle code. <laughs> All right. Change the subject. That's right, yeah. All right, well, let's move on here. <laughs> but before I get everybody all messed up, and I'm guilty of that jumping all over the place because this takes you everywhere. So it's not illegal to change lanes in an intersection, no. It's illegal to change lanes barefoot? <laughs> well, um, no. I said it's illegal if you only have one shoe on. You know, if you have, uh, you know, we got to find the exception to the exception, right? So Class A says that if you're towing a vehicle with a, gr oh, go ahead, sir. The solid lines on the approach to an intersection. Mm -hmm. uh, are they uh, advisory or are they regulatory? What color are they? They're just white, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they're they're just. 
advisor. I mean, it's not even advisor. It's just a white line. And so, you know, the white line doesn't mean it. But let's not go too crazy. Let's, but, but you can change lanes there. There's nothing that prevents you from changing lanes in an intersection. How about coming on the freeway? Have you seen that gore point there? The reverse score, it's a white triangle, and you see people crossing over that. It's really nothing, they're not doing anything wrong. It's just kind of a directional thing. They, there, there would not be anything they could write you a ticket for on that. You know, some say there's a two foot, there's a, it's an over two foot dividing section, but is that a dividing section? But you know, we're going to go, <laughs> we're going to cover the whole vehicle code. <laughs> um, yeah. Is the DMV test, a lot of people get mixed up with it now, because I know what it was. The DMV test, correlation with your book, the same, or the same answer? It's one way, and what you say is the other way. And then who over, I know that one. Yeah, this is their book. But are they the same? The test or the book? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? There, there is there, there's inconsistencies, right? I mean, I, I don't know how you could go through this whole this whole book. Uh, there's a, a something called a utility trailer. Have you heard of a utility trailer? It, they, they talk about it in this book. And but if you go look for the definition of a utility trailer, it's not in this book. But the good news is, it's now in the 2011 vehicle code. Several years ago, they took it out because it was numbered 666. That was the section of the vehicle code. So I, I, guess, I think somebody did that, you know, because they were scared. <laughs> but I'm uh... So anyways, a Class A, a combination of vehicle, a vehicle has a gross vehicle weight rating of more than 10,000 pounds, period. Okay? That requires a Class A license to drive. And then so you know that that is the basic, right? So we're at the basic. Vince Lombardi, his team was doing bad one in a football game. He went into the locker room and held up a football and said, gentlemen, this is a football. Took it right back to the basics, right? So that's the basic. If it exceeds 10,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating, now the light bulb needs to go on in your head that I need a Class A license, unless there's an exception, okay? It also goes on to say a vehicle towing more than one vehicle. Uh, two vehicles, if you're towing two vehicles, guess what you need? Class A license, right? And then it goes on into the vehicle code to say a passenger vehicle may not draw more than one vehicle. So if you have a motor home, it's considered to be a passenger vehicle. These big excursions with, you know, that the advertiser several years ago, you probably saw, I mean, everybody's advertising. My truck has a gross vehicle weight rating of 15,000 pounds. But they don't mention you need motor carrier for all these other things that come in there. So uh, um, a passenger vehicle can only draw one vehicle. And then a Class B... You see these three axle truck tractors, right? Big conventional tractor with the big condo sleeper on there. By itself, that truck only needs a Class B license, okay? Because Class B says a single vehicle with a gross vehicle weight rating more than 26,000 pounds. So for you guys pulling your, your trailers, it's really not going to be the single vehicle that puts you into the Class A license. It's going to be the combination that you're towing something, okay? And then so Class B, um, how about if you have a, a vehicle that weighs 24,000 pounds, gross vehicle weight rating of 24,000 pounds, and it has air brakes? What type of license do you need? C. Just a Class C. Because the air brake is actually a restriction. It's not an endorsement. And that restriction only applies if the vehicle requires a commercial license to drive. Okay? And then now we start going into uh, the exceptions. So those were just the, the three deals. And so now we're covering two pages here of exceptions. And we'll try to focus on what you have. Okay? It's in regards to exceptions. Okay? So... Um, definitions are hugely important also when you're looking for anything in the vehicle code. Uh, Motorhomes. We all know what a motorhome looks like, right? So a motorhome uh, in the vehicle code, if you're looking for it, you're never going to find it. It's not even in the vehicle code. It's under house car. It's just an old definition from, I think, like 1968. The definitions that are going to be important to you are going to be uh, utility trailer, um, camp trailer, uh, recreational vehicle, you know, this kind of stuff. Those kind of definitions are important to you. A uh, pickup truck is going to be the biggest definition for you. And so pickup truck says... 
order to beat the definition of a pickup truck, because pickup trucks get exemption for a lot of things. A pickup truck is a motor truck, with a, and a motor truck is just a vehicle that can carry a load. Okay, so your pickup's a motor truck, a U-Haul truck's a motor truck, and then there's another definition for truck tractor, and the commercial guys probably know a truck tractor pulling certain things gets additional length. Okay, so um, a pickup truck is a motor truck with a manufacturer's gross vehicle weight rating of less than 11,500 pounds. Uh, an F-250, what's an F-250's gross vehicle weight rating? Anybody have that off the top of their head? Not in the newer ones, or, uh, you know, a, a 2004 F-150 had a gross vehicle weight rating over 9,000 pounds. I think it was right at 9,000 pounds. So F-350s, you start getting up into the F-450s, etc. Now your gross vehicle weight rating could exceed that 11,500 pounds, right? And then now you no longer get the exemption uh, that pickup trucks are offered in some cases. Like stopping at our scales. Who has a stop at our scales? Or if we set up an inspection lane, all commercial vehicles in 2813 says all commercial motor vehicles. A pickup is a commercial motor vehicle. But if you've ever gone by our scales, you'll see a black and white sign that says no pickups, right? But you have to meet the definition of a pickup. So it goes on to say an unladen weight of less than 8,001 pounds. So if we weighed it empty by itself, it has to be less than 8,001 pounds, uh, which is equipped with an open box type bed. And you got your angry eyes on now back there, right? <laughs> if the sides are on it, uh -huh. the sides are on it, the sides are on it, the sides have to be disqualified. So the same pickup with the sides are on it is one time the pickup. If you simply take those sides off, then it becomes a platform. Right. Now, does that make any sense? Well, I just to simplify it, that is the officer's discretion. Well, well, now, now, and you know, I, I talk to a lot of our enforcement op, our enforcement people, and and I and I probably in this room, I, I I'm wondering if there's anybody that's had issue. With, yeah. I have a question on this. You, you want to finish that? That's her dad. So you, know. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm only talking to one family member at a time. At it. Mm -hmm. to exempt this rule yeah. are opposed to it. So how do we educate the people that are sitting in Sacramento that don't understand the common sense situation? And, and I probably should be very, very careful because when you start talking, you know, when, you, when you start going into lobbyists, a lot of this stuff, a lot, a lot of the presentation that I give, okay, I'm going to tell you, know, understand that I'm, I'm just a commercial officer, okay? I'm not a guy that can make decisions like that. And, I, and I'm just going to be honest with you and tell you that I, it's not that I don't agree with you, but this is what the book says. And, and, you know, as far as dealing with the lobbyists and stuff, that's way over and above what, what I, you know, uh, I can't represent the department on that. I know, but there comes a point where that I don't want to go back to South Sacramento. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Well, you know what? It's not, you know, normally on things like that, it's a neutral position that we have. You know, the motor carrier permit and all those type and, and those issues, that is also, that's a DM, the DMV runs the motor carrier permit program. We have motor carrier specialists that deal with that. But again, you know what? I, I can't speak with authority on any of that. So, uh, and I hope you understand that. I'm not trying to skirt your question, but I really can't. Um, uh, and you can go to the commissioner and tell him that Officer Gibbons said this, and uh, he's going to say, who's Officer Gibbons? You know? but, but I'll tell you this, we are going, the Judicial Council of California on Monday, we're going to do a little conference call on some commercial rules and regulations in regards to judges talking about that. And that's going to be some commercial folks talking about it. But uh, trust me, I talk to commercial folks every day, and, and, and more and more, um, uh, I see, you know, why are these regulations so complicated? And they really are. They're, they're, it's, it's very bouncing back and forth from definition to definition. How can you comply? But I'm telling you, there's probably not a lot of enforcement going on for you guys in regards to that kind of stuff. Is there? No, that's what I said. Inconsistent. Yeah. And they'll, they'll tell you something, but they're probably not writing you tickets, right? 
Is there a lot of ticket writing going on out there? Most of the time, no. Yeah. But but the reality is, if you stack your truck up and your your vehicle up, then the fancy defense attorneys, I guarantee you, will probably be jumping on board to see. You officers sent back to LA, which is. <laughs> you didn't say this is a rough crowd here. <laughs> you, you know, I, I saw I saw I saw a sign out there that said no firearms, and then you know I know your crowd, so I don't think so. It's coming with me, right? <laughs> I, I want to warn you, we don't have them on our five. Oh, hey, shoot! I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, question. Back. Uh huh. If you're a regulated vehicle, is what it is. It's not really to deal with livestock. It has to deal with being a regulated vehicle. And you know, we have such a short amount of time on this that you know. And no, no, no. I'm not trying to cut you up. And I, but af, when you go to lunch, on my time, I, I'm going to stay here, and so I can answer questions for you. I'm more than happy to do that. And uh, so, just on on. Uh, there's no way you could cover, this is probably at least four hours to start going over motor carrier permits, California identification numbers, etc. But just know for the livestock exemption on the driver's license, okay, restricted license towing a livestock trailer. The department may issue a restricted Class A driver license for the operation of any two axle vehicle weighing 4,000 pounds or more unladen when towing a livestock trailer exceeding 10,000 pounds but not exceeding exceeding 15,000 pounds gross vehicle weight rating if all of the following conditions are met. The vehicle is controlled and operated by a farmer, and you guys have probably heard that a thousand times, right? I see everybody rolling their eyes out there, but I don't make these rules, okay? I'm just telling you where it says it in the book. The vehicle is used to transport livestock to or from a farm. The vehicle is not used in the operation of a common contract carrier. The vehicle is used within 150 miles of the farm. Okay, so there's not a lot of things that get you out of having to have that Class A driver's license. Trailer coach, you'll hear stuff on trailer coach. And a trailer coach gets some exemption. If it's a fifth wheel trailer coach, most of your stuff is gooseneck anyway, right? And then if you tried to get it into something like that. But a trailer coach is for industrial or commercial purposes only. Have you ever heard you can put passengers in the back of a trailer? If it was a fifth wheel connection device and communication and all that. But that section says it only applies to a, a, a um, trailer coach. And so your recreational travel trailer going camping is not a trailer coach. It's not being used for industrial or commercial purposes. Okay? So you, you gotta look in the definitions. Um, what else? Uh, let me, yes. Again, let me give you some. Okay. F 250. Uh huh. I got a. Uh, 18 foot Wilson trailer behind it. Okay. A good, uh, stock trailer. Mm -hmm. uh, the aluminum trailer. So, do I need a Class A or do I need a C? What's the gross vehicle weight rating of that trailer? Of the trailer? Yes. Um, if it's over 10,000 pounds, yes, you do. Okay. Okay. Of the gross. And the gross would include it's the, the weight of the trailer and the load. Two things. Everybody hear that question? Does it include the weight of the What we go by first off is the manufacturer's ID plate on the trailer. GVWR, 11,000 pounds, needs a Class A license. If it's empty, I mean, if, let's say that you took your chisel and whipped that thing off there, hey, I need a Class C, right? We can get it. Oh, He's never seen that done before. Right? Right. And if I could buy the sound. Yeah, I don't think anybody's ever done that before, right? <laughs> anyway, so, so now California, if, if we weighed it and it was over 10,000 pounds, then the Class A would apply. If we weighed it and it was under 10,000, it wouldn't apply. Okay. Uh, regardless. So if it was empty and we weighed it, if it was empty, regardless. we're going to know it's not over 10 grand. You're, you're, you know. So, but um, uh, I don't suggest you do that kind of stuff. But question. Where... Because we all drive different trucks, hopefully we're all parking right for it. 
<laughs> where, where might we find the GV in our, the, the range for the truck and the trailer? Uh, the, where where the, the 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 manufacturer's gross it would be gross combined weight rating if you're looking for what it'll take both of them. But the trucks should be inside the door on the label there. Yeah. Um, uh, um, you know you'll see it in the door jam there. You can open up the door; it'll be in there. And on the trailer, it's usually up on the tongue there, someplace stamped on there by the manufacturer. And then that's kind of origi that originally that's how that's supposed to come. They're supposed to have those kind of items on there. Um, where do you find, which website has it in the book? Uh, uh, the DMV website, or the, the Caltrans website is actually the best website for you. And if you've ever got on the state, it's www.dot.dot for Department of Transportation, dot ca dot gov. And you're going to look for their Office of Truck Services. Tons of information. Vehicle code free. Everything on there is, is uh, and, and even the DMV's website will give you the vehicle code. Calcos.com also. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. They're, they're gonna go. Yeah. No problem. I guess.